Hey everybody, welcome back to Killing the Cabal. This is an episode about the research that I've done on the Guinness family, and I just want to start off by saying that it's um, it's been a while, but I'm continuing to do my research, and um, just stay tuned for some other really great episodes. Uh, but this one is going to be all about the Guinness family and um, just taking a look behind the veil, because when you try to research families like this, a lot of times you find a lot of that kind of nice... Um, the nicer image that the media tries to portray. So, you know, um, this elegant, rich family that, you know, started um, by selling, you know, making beer, selling beer, and now it's this really wealthy, elite family. And uh, so this is basically just kind of taking a look um, behind the scenes. And it, it took a lot of digging to kind of find some of this nitty gritty stuff that I've been able to uncover. Uh, now, if you want to do research like this yourself, I would recommend it. And a good place to start is by pulling up uh, a family tree of any family that you're digging into. And, you know, the purpose of this is not to, um, it's not just to expose things. It's also to kind of get a better understanding of how these families work. Because, you know, one of the things that has always frustrated me is um, we are expected, the public is expected to revere and worship these elite families. When the royal family has a wedding or when one of these great families, so-called great families, has um, an event like a wedding, um, what do we do? We immediately rush to look at the pictures and uh, or watch them on TV. And I, I know that kind of life is... Um, now that this great awakening has happened, I know that kind of life is for them is coming to an end. And it's really important for us to do research on them and, you know, take a look behind the scenes because the way that the families are structured are very interesting. And each person in these families has a role to play in the um, betterment of the family to keep them on top. And that could be in any industry. It could be in, a, in the finance industry, entertainment industry, um, or, you know, any other industry. So uh, political, uh, political arena. So we're going to be taking a look at a few individuals and, um, and just kind of breaking down some different uh, articles that I've been able to find on them. So let's take a look at the first article here. Um, let me go into this article about the Guinness sisters. There are three Guinness sisters. Um, Una, Marine, and Eileen. Now, the first one that we're going to talk about is Una. Una Guinness had two sons, their names are Tara Brown and Garrick Brown. And um, we're going to be talking about them in a moment. But first, I'm going to talk about a quote that director John Houston uh, said about the three sisters. Um, so I'll just go ahead and read it here. It says, the sisters are all witches, the director said the director John Houston. Lovely ones to be sure, but witches nonetheless. They are transparent skinned with pale hair and blue eyes. Um, so when you take a look at the elite families, a lot of them have these really lavish parties. They're friends with other elite families, even the royal families. And uh, the Guinness family is one of those families that I did not expect to be so well connected, but they are. I thought maybe they were one of the kind of, you know, um, I knew that they were rich, I knew that they had a position, but I had no idea how ingrained they were into these societies. So, <clears throat> um, you know, I don't know what that quote means exactly. Um, take it for what you will, but uh, there is a lot of uh, talk around Daphne Guinness, and she's... Um, you know, I know that it's just her style to be kind of goth and dark and wear 
some really strange things, but um, I think that there might be something more to that quote than, uh, you know, I mean, if I, I am taking it literally, to be honest with you, but if some of you don't want to, um, it's at least something interesting to point out. Let's move on to Una's sons. We have Tara Brown and Garrick Brown. I'll go ahead and pull up the pictures of them. Okay, so here's Tara Brown. <clears throat> Tara Brown was born in uh, 1945. So Tara was the um, Tara was the heir to the Guinness Fortune. He had two sons with a woman named Maureen McSherry. Her nickname was Nikki. Uh, Tara was tragically killed in a car accident. He was speeding, and I think he was, um, you know, he was allegedly on drugs or drinking. And he was speeding, and he uh, died tragically. Um, and then his two sons <clears throat> that were with their mother were actually given to his mother, Una, in a custody battle. The judge ruled in favor of Una, uh, the grandmother, and it's said that Nikki was um, very devastated that she lost her boys. Now, I don't know all the details about that case. I don't know if she was an unfit mother, but what I do know is these families tend to like to um, kind of bring up their own, and, um, you know... If Una wasn't going to get to raise her grandsons and kind of get her heirs to um, sort of, you know, live the life that they lived and learn the things that they learned and kind of be um, ingratiated into that lifestyle, it was going to be an issue for her, obviously. So... Uh, I think it was it was crucial for her to get a hold of them while they were young, and that seems to be that the trend basically. Um, <clears throat> so Dorian and Julian Brown, the two sons of Tara Brown, were given to his Tara's mother Una. She's one of those three sisters that I was talking about. Um, there is a castle in Ireland. It's called Logula, and Lugula was given to Una Guinness uh, when she was married, and it was given to her by her father. Lugula, while Una had it, hosted many famous artists and poets and musicians. Some of those famous artists were, um, you know, very, very famous people like the Beatles. And the Beatles uh, were actually, a lot of the members of the Beatles were really good friends with Tara. And actually, they, you know, they ended up writing a song about, um, about him when he died. I think it's called A Day in the Life or something like that. Um, so that was very tragic. Now, some of the artists that they invited um, were people like Lucian Freud. Lucian Freud came to Lugula and ended up meeting um, Una's niece, Lady Caroline Blackwood. Lady Caroline Blackwood married Lucian Freud. Let's take a look at Tara's brother, Garrick. This is Garrick Brown right here. The Garrick eventually became the caretaker and owner of Lugula. And this is Garrick, um, much older, but then you can see there's a painting in the background, and that's him as a boy. This painting is called A Boy, and it was painted by Lucian Freud. Lucian Freud was a famous artist and the grandson of Sigmund Freud. So when he came to Lugula, he befriended a very young Garrick Brown and painted him. Just a, uh, <clears throat> on a side note, Lucian Freud also painted many other children, including his daughters, um, he started painting his 14-year-old daughter, uh, and, uh, I believe he had two daughters that he used to paint, but, um, when he started painting his children, the first child was only 14 years old, and they were nude paintings. So, 
this man is a very disturbed person that he would, um, you know, paint his 14 year old daughter nude, uh, you know, pardon my language, but she was kind of sprawled out. Uh, she, she said this in an article, she described the experience and she said that it was very strange and uncomfortable, but it was the only time that she ever had gotten her father's attention because he had so many children. He had many, 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 uh, lovers and from that children, uh, he was allegedly bisexual and as a 17 year old boy, Lucian Freud <clears throat> had a relationship with a much older man. And there are letters that the, uh, that this man's, um, uh, family had from Lucian Freud to this older gentleman. And I don't recall his name, but um, and in these letters, he's talking about um, their relationship and how he misses him and everything. Um, but back to Garrick Brown, <clears throat> the, this relationship between him and Lucian Freud lasted a very long time. Relationship, and what I mean by that is friendship, because I don't know anything else other than just that they had a friendship. But, um, you know, he came to, Lucian Freud came to Legula, met Lady Caroline Blackwood, and they got married. So let's concentrate on Garrick for just a moment because there's a lot out there on Garrick. He owned a, uh, an Irish record label, and there are a lot of nice things that are said about him, his eccentricities and um, how he was, uh, he liked to support artists and things like that. But <clears throat> if you take a look at, if you think about Lugula and what it was, um, it was kind of like a very grand place for parties and hosting famous people, um, including later in, uh, in Garrick's life, uh, people like Michael Jackson and, um, you know, the Rolling Stones, Mick Jagger. So lots and lots of celebrities just in and out of that place. And they kept logs of all the people that would come in and out. Um, he lived a very charmed life. He had a lot of money. And unfortunately, when um, Una died, he was left to um, take care of, he was the caretaker of this house and, or this castle, and he didn't manage his money well, and he ended up losing it. Um, Bono, the lead singer of U2, tried to step in and buy the castle, but it didn't work out. And uh, he was going to allow Garrick to stay there and be the caretaker still, but of course Bono would own it. That didn't work out, so Garrick ended up losing it. Um, now, I did find an article uh, of a family member that had some negative things to say about Garrick. And some of those things were um, just that, you know, Garrick was very arrogant. He was a mean person, mean-spirited. He drank a lot. Um, now... That is a common theme in this family, the drinking, the alcoholism. Ivana Lowell is the daughter of Lady Caroline Blackwood, and she wrote this uh, really incredible um, uh, memoir uh, called Why Not Say What Happened? And in it, she is describing her um, abuse as a child, uh, sexual abuse, by someone um, that lived in their home when she was a girl and uh, her mother's relationships with with uh, the different men that she married and and you know so um, yeah Garrick Garrick had a lot of issues and I don't think he was um, a very nice person uh, according to some of these people so um, now, one thing to mention, I'm going to show you a picture here. All right, so here's Garrick Brown on the left. Um, these are Tara Brown's sons. This is Julian and Dorian. These are the sons that were taken and given to Una. And here they are spreading the ashes of their uncle, uh, Garrick. Just wanted, <clears throat> wanted to show you the pictures of, of these gentlemen. Okay. Let's talk about Lucian Freud. Okay. <clears throat> Here's Lucian Flo Freud with his then wife, Lady Caroline Blackwood. Now, both of them have been had been multiple marriages and um, 
the only thing I'll say about this is it kind of, it was described as, um, you know, being a very passionate marriage at first and then just kind of fizzled out and the two went their own way. Now, I do want to show you, um, this is the letter that Lucian wrote to the gentleman that he allegedly had a, a relationship with. So this, um, he, he drew a few things <clears throat> in the letter and he's saying, and he is, you know, saying a lot of different things, saying that he thinks of him at night. So just some images that I'll show you here. And don't forget, this is the grandson of Sigmund Freud. So that is also something interesting that kind of plays into this. Lucian was also very, very good friends with um, Francis Bacon, the, um, the famous painter, who was also gay, which doesn't matter, doesn't really have anything to do anything, but I suspect that they could have, um, this is just my opinion, not, I don't have any fact behind this, but they could have had a relationship, who knows? Although, um, <clears throat> uh, Lucian was asked about that one time and he denied it and said that he wasn't, uh, I guess he wasn't Francis's, um, type, but here's Lucian holding, uh, a bird. I don't, I can't tell what type of bird that is, um, but this is when he was very young. Um, this is a painting of his, some sort of bird. It kind of looks like an owl to me. That's why I wanted to show you. Um, Lucian painted a lot of famous people. Um, this is a painting he did of one of the Mitford sisters, and I can't recall her name at the moment. I know it's not Diana. I know it's obviously not Unity, um, but it's one of their other, the other of the five sisters. If you haven't watched my uh, research on the Mitford sisters. It is incredibly interesting, incredibly fascinating. Please watch it because you, there's so much that you can glean. And just remember that Daphne Guinness's grandmother was Diana Mitford, the sister of this woman that you're looking at right here. And she was a um, Nazi sympathizer and friends with um, Adolf Hitler and other Nazis. Her husband was also a part of that, um, that party. Um, so Lucian Freud had a lot of, did a lot of nude paintings of, <clears throat> like I mentioned, his children and well, his daughters more specifically, not, I don't know that he painted his, any of his sons naked, but a lot of, um, men and women, uh, and a lot of famous people, um, he did this painting of the queen, Queen Elizabeth. He actually did um, this painting of um, uh, Jacob Rothschild, excuse me. Um, so th these are the connections that he has. All right, here he is with, this is Lucian Freud as an old man <laughs> on the left. And of course you have Mr. Rothschild on the right there. Here he is meeting the queen. Weird to see that kind of owl symbol in the background. I don't know if anybody else can see that or picks up on that, but it is what it is. I don't know if it means anything, but it could. Who knows? So here he is meeting her. He had painted her. <clears throat> and for such a notorious figure to be kind of entwined um, in these uh, families, I just it's kind of unreal. Um, okay. And then another person that he painted is, let's see here. Okay. Um, Kate Moss. So here's one that he did of Kate Moss. He actually did a few different ones. Um, there is some nudity, so I will just, you know, say if you have any children watching, I would recommend not allowing them to see this next part. It's a painting. It's not a real person. You know, it's not a picture of a person, but, and then here's Kate Moss that he did a painting of. <clears throat> and then here they are lying in bed together. It was some sort of like weird artistic, you know, performance piece or whatever, but, um, 
very strange. And just remember that models like Kate Moss and Naomi Campbell, remember what their connections are. Naomi Campbell has connections to Bill Clinton, Jeffrey Epstein, Ghislaine Maxwell, um, you know, John of God. Uh, Kate Moss is the same. She has connections to the same exact people. So just keep that in mind. Don't forget about that piece of information. And Kate Moss is also very good friends with Daphne Guinness. I'll point that out. And so is um, Naomi Campbell. <clears throat> okay, so enough about Lucian Freud. Let's move on to the next person. And that is Lady Caroline Blackwood and Ivana Lowell. Um, okay, so I've pretty much said everything I need to say about Lady um, Blackwood. Uh now, I will talk about her brother in a few minutes here, but let's take a look at Ivana. Ivana has some very, very interesting connections. Here she is with her then boyfriend. This is Bob Weinstein. Harvey Weinstein's brother, Bob Weinstein, all right? She dated Bob and... Um, I believe she was introduced to him by, um, let's see, Catherine Guinness. Catherine Guinness was Bob Weinstein's um, PA, and she also, um, oh no, I'm sorry, I take that back. Catherine Guinness was, um, oh, what's his name? I'll come back to that in a moment, but let's let's keep uh, let's keep looking at Ivana Lowell here, and we'll come back to that in a minute. But she was introduced to him. Um, I can't remember who it was uh, through, but she dated Bob Weinstein for a while. It did not go well, from what she says, um, and I believe she was an actress for a little while too. Um, now, there's a gentleman named Tom Stoppard. Tom Stoppard is a playwright. He wrote Shakespeare in Love. I don't know if you've ever heard of the movie called Shakespeare in Love, but that was produced by Harvey Weinstein. Tom Stoppard ended up in later in life marrying Sabrina Guinness. Sabrina Guinness is someone completely separate from Ivana Lowell, but um, a Guinness nonetheless, and, you know, they are related. Um, and they're not far apart, but... Uh, so if you, if you can just Google search Ivana Lowell and, um, you know, say, type in Ivana Lowell, um, childhood, it, it will give you so much information. And of course, I'm not going to belabor her childhood and every little thing that happened because it would take a very long time. But like I mentioned, she was abused by the housekeeper's husband um, her mother was an alcoholic and barely, um, did anything with her. And that actually is a very good, uh, kind of segue to kind of go off into who her mother was. Her mother was Maureen Guinness. Maureen was one of the three sisters, those three Guinness sisters. Um, so Maureen's sisters, Una and Eileen, <clears throat> and, um, Maureen Guinness was very good friends with, uh, I think you would call her the Queen Mother, but um, the, the Queen of England's mother, I believe, or mother-in-law. I can't remember which one it was, but um, she would throw these really lavish parties, and she was known as kind of like a prankster and would have very strange parties. Um, uh, you know, pardon my language, but she would wear... Um, a, a false nose, and it was designed to look like a penis. Um, you know, she just did very, very, very strange things like that. But Maureen Guinness did not, you know, if you read about her relationship with her children, she really didn't do anything with them. She didn't raise them herself. This is Maureen right here with um, Lady Caroline Blackwood when she was a, a child. And um, so she basically led it up to her nannies to watch the children. Now, Lady Caroline Blackwood was a writer, and she um, was not wealthy. I mean, she had some money, but she really wasn't, you know, 
uh, one of these super rich people, um, she's certainly not as wealthy as her mother, Maureen. And Ivana describes her childhood as being kind of, <clears throat> you know, just not not being watched after by her mother. And that is where the abuse kind of started. And then she describes how one day she spilled hot water on herself, um, including her private area. Um, this was when she was five years old and burned herself. And then her mother came to her aid <clears throat> and it ended up, you know, actually being there for her and nursing her back to health. So um, that was the thing that um, actually saved her from the child abuse because the um, the maid and her husband ended up moving not long after that incident. And she said, thank God for that, those burns, because, um, you know, even though she was scarred for life, you know, both physically and, of course, emotionally and mentally, but I'm talking more so about the physical scarring of the third degree burns. Um, because of that, uh, her mother really looked after her after that. Um, now this is Maureen Guinness when she was an old woman. Here she is with Garrick Brown. And I don't know what kind of animal that pen is, but I just noticed that. And, uh, very fascinating. I don't know what kind of bird that is. Um, so, okay, so we're, we covered Ivana Lowell. I don't know. Okay, yes. Um, I believe she was introduced to Bob Weinstein by Catherine Guinness. Now, Catherine Guinness was the PA for Andy Warhol. Um, let's see if we can find, I thought that, yeah, here we go. Here she, here's Catherine Guinness with Andy Warhol. Now, if you watched any of my videos on Daphne Guinness, you'll know that Daphne Guinness and her really good friend, um, David LaChapelle, the photographer, famous photographer, they both were kind of in the, during this time period of Catherine being the PA for Andy Warhol, they were kind of in that group of people that all, you know, spent time together. And um, Andy Warhol, uh, you know, it, it, of course, we know all of his connections and how he's kind of <clears throat> involved in, in the deep state and everything. But he took a liking to this young man, and his name is uh, Valentine Guinness. Valentine Guinness um, is married to Lulu Guinness. So Valentine is the Guinness, and his wife is has married into the family. Um, this is Lulu Guinness here on the left. And she has a clothing line. If you look at the um, purse that uh, this woman is wearing, it has the eyeball right there. Okay, these are the kind of things that Lulu designs. Very strange pieces. Um, so let's take a look. I believe I have a picture of Lulu and Valentine together now. Yeah, here we go. This is them together right here. These are some strange earrings. I don't know what's going on there, but it kind of looks like um, Bale to me, but I could be wrong. It's kind of blurry, so maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Maybe it's just an indigenous, um, uh, you know, little idol. But, um, but this is Valentine and Lulu. And really, the only thing I want to mention about these two is their, um, you know, basically just her business ventures into the fashion industry. Um, now, when I talked about elite families before and how they kind of branch off into different um, different career pathways like the financial industry, you know, financial and, um, of course, Hollywood and uh, getting kind of ingratiated into um, pop culture and, um, you know, just all these different little um, 
uh, areas of our lives, um, it's very convenient for the family because then they can kind of um, have a little bit more control of where they steer pop culture. So she is one of those people that has a very famous clothing line. It's not, it's more famous in England than it is here, but, um, and also Ireland, but it's very expensive and it's very, it's kind of like Kate Spade. Um, and the designs are very strange. If you look up her designs, there's things with eyeballs on it. Um, there's a lot of really weird kind of, um, things that she puts into her, her design. And, uh, so that's all I'm going to say about that. But the fact that Valentine was, um, now Valentine is the brother of, uh, Catherine Guinness and Daphne Guinness, by the way. Um, the fact that, that Valentine kind of spent a lot of time around Andy Warhol and all of these people kind of, you know, hang out together, that is interesting. I'd love to get more information on that, but it takes a lot of time to, to research those little connections there. But, um, they also have another brother. Um, I don't have his name in front of me here, but I can very easily find it. Um, now this gentleman, let me see if I can find it here. Okay. Um, there was an art studio in Ireland and this Guinness brother, um, of Daphne Guinness. And let me just find his name. He actually has passed on now. But he w he got into some trouble. Um, his name is Bash Sebastian Guinness. Sebastian, um, let me just make sure that's right. Do not want to get that wrong. Give me one moment, guys. Um, okay. Okay, so there's actually a lot of Guinnesses that are artists, um, but I do believe that it was the Sebastian... Guinness, um, art studio. Uh, anyway, um, it's now shut down. It, it's not even open anymore, but, um, when it was open, conveniently, Daphne, um, Guinness's, uh, friend that I had mentioned before, uh, David LaChapelle, he had an exhibit at this Guinness um, art studio. And um, here is his piece that stand, stood outside of the studio. So, you know, the imagery that they use is just always so obvious and so uh, disturbing. But I just thought that I would show you that. And if you haven't seen my research on David LaChapelle. There's an episode on him and just image after image. Um, you know, he, all of his photography is just riddled with some, uh, symbolism. Um, okay. So, uh, that brother that I mentioned of Daphne Guinness, he also got into some really big trouble. Um, he, he and a friend gave one of their friends, um, allegedly gave one of their friends uh, some narcotics and she overdosed and died. So he got into some trouble for that. Um, but uh, of course, not very much trouble because that seems to be the trend with these people. They can do, do things that most people would, you know, be in jail for years for, but they get away with it. Okay, so the next uh, person that I'm going to be talking about here is um, is Sheridan Frederick Blackwood. 
and he married his fourth cousin, Lindy Serena Guinness. Now, this is a picture of Lindy Serena Guinness, and their marriage was not a real marriage, um, and she talks about that in one of her articles. Um, Sheridan Frederick Blackwood was actually, he was gay, and he married his cousin um, for, of course, position and appearances, and just to kind of um, be able to continue uh, his lifestyle with not a lot of questions. I mean, this was a long time ago, so it's not like you know, a lot of people that were openly gay could live the lives that they wanted to live. So, um, so here she is as an older woman talking about art. And, um, one thing I want to just revert to, go back to is Sheridan Frederick Blackwood, her husband, her fourth cousin that she married, um, was the brother of Lady Caroline Blackwood. Okay, so these two, you know, this brother and sister of Maureen Guinness, they had a very rough childhood, like I mentioned before. I don't know everything that went on because they, they, the two of them were a little bit more tight-lipped than, um, than Lady Caroline Blackwood's daughter. But, uh, yeah, it, it's just, some of these things just, they're coming out to, you know, to lighten now, but, um, but yeah, this was, uh, this was not like a real marriage and, um, uh, just something that I wanted to bring up. Okay. Uh, and I do believe that, um, Sheridan had some connections to really famous people as well. Let me see if I can find a picture of Sheridan. Cause I think I actually do have one. I may have one. Um, Uh, I, okay, no, I don't. But anyway, um, okay, let's move on to, let's move on to, okay, here's, here's a really good one. This is Jack Guinness. Jack Guinness is, um, he's also, he's also gay, actually, and he is very famous in London. He has a huge following in London. Um, He's a writer, he's a columnist, and he talks a lot about, um, he's described as the, quote, coolest man in Britain. He has, an, you know, uh, written a book called The Queer Bible. Um, he has a huge following. He's very, very well uh, uh, liked, and um, he talks a lot about fashion and image and um, uh things like that. And I think he actually was a model for a little while as well. So here he is with Courtney Love. I mean, if you're friends with Courtney Love, it really doesn't say much <laughs> for you. <laughs> it's not a very good thing to be pictured with her. But uh, anyway, um, and I'm trying to pull up who his parents are right now. Um, let's see here. Uh, but anyway, um, so let's see, I think I have another picture of him here. I might, um, no, okay, I don't. Anyway, um, yeah, he's very outspoken about his sexuality and about um, a lot of other topics. Um, I'm still trying to find his parents here. Give me one more moment. Um, I will come back to that, but I do know that his, um, let's see here, I'm actually almost there, so I'll just take a look at that. Okay, I'm not as close as I thought I was to finding that information. Um, let's move on from him, but he's someone to watch because he is a trendsetter and um, uh, he's someone that steers the pop culture in, in London. 
um, just like Daphne Guinness, you know, Daphne Guinness steers the pop culture here in America and also in London, but spe more specifically here in America. <clears throat> okay. Lady Serena Guinness. Okay. Here's, here, not Serena, Sabrina, excuse me. Um, okay, so Sabrina Guinness is here on the right, and actually I don't think she's lady, so strike that, but Sabrina Guinness was actually um, courted by Prince Charles um, right before he married Princess Diana. They um, were supposed, I, I don't know that they were supposed to get married, but they were very close to getting married. And Sabrina um, ended up not getting married. She was very, um, very much like the it girl back then. And her husband now is Tom Stoppard. He's that gentleman that I told you guys about. That's the playwright that, that wrote Shakespeare in Love. So she's married now, later in life. But back then, she dated a lot of famous people. She went to a lot of parties. Here she is, picture with Jacob Rothschild and... Um, and there are many photos of her with other people. Here she is again with Jacob Rothschild. Here's Daphne Guinness with Jacob Rothschild. Um, and this is another Guinness here, the Redhead's a Guinness with Paris Hilton. Uh, I don't recall her name though, but here's Sabrina again with her, uh, niece, I believe. Jessica. Guinness. I think that her last name is Guinness. Um, but I know for sure her first name is Jessica. Anyway, so, um, here she is with Prince Charles, Sabrina. And like I said, she was the it girl. Her, um, brother Hugo Guinness, uh, is an artist. Um, and I believe he lives here in America, but, um, his art isn't, I looked into his art. It really isn't a big deal. I, I haven't been able to find anything that looks strange or um, not a lot of sim symbolism or anything like that, but he's definitely someone that I looked into. Um, so there she is with Prince Charles and um, let's see here. I don't think there's any other pictures that I have of her, but um, yeah, she's, she's one of those people in the family that, um, she was, I, I think that they really wanted her to, her family members really pushed her to, um, into trying to, uh, marry Prince Charles and then it just didn't work out for them. But like I said, they try to put themselves in positions of power, um, and and, uh, in order to, you know, get them into a good, uh, advantageous marriage. Her father is James E. A. R. Guinness. And, um, one of, one of their other daughters is Anita Patience Guinness. Um, Anita Patience Guinness ended up marrying a Rothschild. So they did get one of their daughters to marry into another one of those uh, royal families. <clears throat> now, I... Oh, this is really interesting. Okay, so Sabrina Guinness right here, the woman you're looking at on the right. Um, she's technically related to uh, Jacob Rothschild by marriage. Um, her sister married a Rothschild. Her niece is Kate Emma Rothschild. And um, she married a Goldstein, or, um, wait, Goldsmith, excuse me, Goldsmith. And their daughter was that young woman that died uh, two years ago. Uh, she was only 16 years old, um, maybe 15 years old, actually. Um, she died in that horrible, horrible accident uh, it was like a, um, a four wheel ATV accident. Um, but that was just, you know, just horrific. But, um, Iris Annabelle Goldsmith is the, the great, uh, niece of Sabrina. That's the one that, that passed away. 
This is uh, Jasmine Guinness. She is the daughter of Patrick Guinness. And you can see here that she has this very strange hat on. Um, kind of looks like an L to me. Uh, but anyway, she was a model and, uh, you know, kind of ran in the same circles as all of the other um, Guinnesses that were in the uh, kind of entertainment industry or um, fashion industry as well. She's very good friends with Lulu Guinness and spends a lot of time with her. And uh, she owned a children's uh, toy line. Um, I don't think that it's actually... A business anymore uh, but um, she's an heiress to uh, the Guinness fortune as well so um, just someone interesting to look at she wears a lot of um, Lulu stuff uh, with those eyeballs that I had pointed out before um, a little bit strange so another thing that I I don't think I've ever seen this before or shown I don't I definitely didn't show you guys this before but this is an Instagram post and some of you may have already seen this but this is Tom Guinness and um, he is talking to um, Asia Argento so this in this post right post right here it's um, just like a little back and forth between them um, but you can see that she put the eyes here the heart and uh, there's some different symbols that he used, a black heart, rose, black smiley face, um, like darkened smiley face, gray, and um, a, a moon. I'm not really sure where, um, I'm not sure where this was or what the context of this picture is, but uh, they're both wearing robes and they both have very strange, um, he has a little pendant on his robe and then she has this very odd looking necklace. Um, if you know anything about Asia Argento, you know that her father is a film director and um, they are kind of part of like a um, a family that is, I don't even know how to describe their religion other than just to say it's it falls into kind of like that satanic category. But you can look it up there. Um, she's definitely a witch. I think she's even said specifically that she is a witch or in that in a coven or something like that. But anyway, she's um, one of those um, people that is very open about that. So um, interesting connection between the Guinness family and Asia, though, given that her family is into the occult. This is Lady Mary... I don't know how to say her last name, but I'll attempt it. Charteris. And um, she is the niece of Daphne Guinness, okay? So this is Catherine Guinness's daughter. Catherine Guinness was the PA of Andy Warhol. She is a um, really good friend of Kate Moss, and she also um, was a... I, I don't know if she still is, but she was a model, and she was discovered by Izzy Blow. Isabella Blow was um, a model and a very good friend of uh, Alexander McQueen. Now, all of these connections are very important because Alexander McQueen allegedly committed suicide. Um, and his muse was Annabella, or no, Annabelle... Um, I can't remember her last name now, but she was married to uh, Nathaniel Rothschild. Annabelle committed suicide. Annabelle Nielsen committed suicide by hanging herself from a doorknob with a scarf. Okay, so she was friends with Isabel Blow, uh, Izzy Blow, and um, Alexander McQueen, and Daphne Guinness, and Kate Moss, and um, um. Uh, all those, all of those people in the fashion industry. Um, so the fact that Izzy Blow uh, picked her out is not a coincidence. They all know each other, but she she supposedly discovered her. She probably just, you know, um, was pointed in the right direction or was a recruiter. Um, now, uh, Izzy Blow committed suicide as well. 
It said that she had some shock therapy, some sh uh, some kind of shock therapy treatment um, for depression, for bipolar de depression, and some other, um, you know, strange neglect and uh, abuse, I think, as well. So, um, now, Lady Mary is really good friends with people like um, Rita Ora, and like I said, Kate Moss. Um, Rita Ora uh, has been in some of my stuff before just because of the symbolism. Um, but yeah, very, very interesting uh, person to research if, if you want to get into her, okay? Um, and then she's also in a part of a music group as well. Lots of symbolism there. Okay, now we're going to talk about Victoria uh, Guinness. She married um, into the Nierkos family. I don't know if I'm saying that last name correctly either. Um, I'm going to be saying a lot of Greek names in a minute, so please forgive any um, anything that I don't pronounce right. But um, So if you watch the Daphne Guinness um, documentary that I did, you'll already know that she was married to um, a Nierkos as well. Um, Victoria Guinness is the cousin of Daphne Guinness. So these two cousins married the Nierkos brothers, okay? Now, Victoria had four children to, um, her husband. And, um, those children are Stavros, you, uh, Eugene, or I don't think that's Eugene, actually. I think it's something else. Eugenie? I don't know. Maybe that is how you spell Eugene. Um, I won't even attempt the third one. And then Electra. Okay, so the one that I'm really going to concentrate on is Stavros. Stavros Nierkos III. He is um, the eldest, and he's the one that's going to inherit this huge fortune. His father is Philip. Philip Nierkos. Now, he and his father are big art collectors. Here's a picture of um, Philip in the middle, his daughter Electra on the right, and then his wife um, Victoria Guinness on the left. Here's a picture of Philip when he was younger. Now, um, if you look at their artwork, it is very odd, the stuff that they collect. Um, I'm not going to show all that stuff right now, but um, this... Uh, this is a very rich family. Uh, this is a the these are the sons and grandsons of a Greek shipping magnate, and um, what they do is they typically they'll invest money into different ventures, and art is probably one of the um, easiest ways to for people that want to funnel money or want to. Um, launder money. That's one of the easiest ways they can do it. Um, so you could have an artist, like let's backtrack to Natalie Chandler's husband, who is a supposed artist, you know. Um, looking at his artwork, there's nothing remarkable, remarkable about it. It's not even interesting. Um, but he's able to make a, a living off of it. And so you have people put into these positions where it's like, you know, they're talentless, they, um, you know, people in these elite families, they're, they really don't have a, a skill or a talent, um, so they'll kind of pose as artists or, um, you know, philanthropists, and then they're able to then um, funnel money. So, um, let's take a look at Starverse for a minute, because he has a lot of connections to famous people. He had a very... Um, big wedding. It was a huge to do not too long ago, I think a year ago, uh, or two. And, um, okay. So actually it was more recent than that. So this is, um, January of 2020. Okay. He marries this girl, Dasha, um, Zukova. And, um, some of the people that Stavros, uh, dated were people like, um, Mary Kate Olson, Lindsay Lohan, and Paris Hilton. 
Okay, Lindsay Lohan, we all know there's something wrong right there. There's something happened to her. I can't quite put my finger on it. I have no idea. I really haven't been able to do a lot of research on her. Um, Mary Kate Olsen, we know, has connections to Rachel Chandler and also to the, um, the overdose of Heath Ledger and other things as well, the Sarkozy's um, in France. Um, and uh, Paris Hilton, I mean, the Hiltons just have so many, um, uh, <laughs> I'm actually going to be doing some research on them soon. So stay tuned for a Hilton video because I think what's going on with Paris Hilton and her documentary, if you haven't heard of that yet, she claims that she was sexually and mentally abused um, in a facility that she was um, taken to um, for uh, rehabilitation for drug and alcohol addiction. Um, she was, and for, I, I think it was not just that, I think it was for behavioral issues. Um, she was sent there by her parents and uh, there was like a whole documentary on it. And at first I was really happy that she came out and started talking about this, but the more that I really looked into it, the more that I could tell that there's, there's something else going on there. And I think that, um, you know, when we talk about MK ultra, um, and different mind control techniques, I think this was probably the easiest way that they could come out and, um, kind of get ahead of the story. Uh, cause I think a lot of people that have been put through MK ultra, will either come out or they will be, you know, um, kind of exp the people that did it will be exposed. So there's more to come out about that. But anyway, Paris Hilton dated this guy. Um, and a lot of famous people were at this wedding. They have friends like Stella uh, Maxwell, Stella McCartney. Um, Princess Beatrice was there, which is crazy. Um, that is the daughter of... Prince Andrew. Okay, so they're friends with her. That doesn't bode well for them. Um, Katy Perry, we know all about her and her issues with MK Ultra. Uh, so this is a very, uh, this is probably another one of those families that I should be looking into. But for right now, we're just looking at Guinness. So this Guinness family has is really intertwined with the Nearcos family as well as the Hilton family, as well as the Rothschild family. So you can see those connections already. Okay. Um, I think the last uh, person that we are going to talk about here, um, I, I've already gone into Daphne so much. If you want to know more about Daphne Guinness, you can um, watch that documentary that I did. But um, you know, when it comes to Daphne Guinness, the, the bullet points would be, you know, she was married to Spiros Nirakos, and there's an article that was published, an interview that she did where she, she says that she does not remember her time with him. She was married very young. Um, it was a really good marriage for her because, you know, this guy's loaded, obviously. And uh, good marriage for her. She had three children. Um, she has a lot of money now. And she, um, after all of that happened, she kind of got into this whole fashion persona. She's a designer. She's a singer. And the symbolism just, uh, it just goes on and on and on. I mean, the connections between her and the deep state and between her and, um, you know, people that are not so nice, um, are just too numerous to even list right now. Um, but just, you know, if you want to know more about Daphne Guinness, you can watch that other video that I did on her. And, um, and I think I'll leave it at that because, uh, you know, I could just kind of go off on, giving a little bit more information on each person, but those are the only people that I've um, really looked into so far. Uh, there is one more connection, and um, I really haven't looked into it too much, but what I, what I will say is there is a Guinness that 
is um, involved in U.S. politics, and um, there's a Texas politician that kind of vouched for him, um, which I thought was very, very strange. And, um, you know, I'm going to look into that a little bit more, uh, but, you know, another person might be Jonathan Guinness here. Um, he's been involved in a lot of, um, you know, different scandals, uh, mainly to do with, I think it's like a finance scandal, I believe. Um, but other than that, really kind of, um, you know, just uh, being the son of Lady Mitford and, uh, you know, that in and of itself is kind of scandalous. Um, and then, of course, all the relationships that he's had and, um, uh, yeah, so I'm going to leave it there. Thank you for watching, and please like, share, and subscribe this video, as well as other videos uh, that I've made, and just stay tuned for some more, um, some more content on the research that I'm doing into the Hilton family, and also um, some very, uh, some other very interesting um, things that I'm working on. And if you are subscribed to my YouTube channel, you will actually get notifications when I communicate with you guys through the community tab. It'll be a picture and then some text. Um, so thank you so much and uh, until next time.